Hi, how are you? Hi, I'm good. My name's Carrie. What is your name? My name is Richard. It's nice Hi, to meet Richard. you. Hi, Richard. It's good to meet you too. Where are you from? I'm from Brazil. What about you? I, I'm from the US, but I'm living in Morocco right now. Hmm, that's cool. Morocco. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Uh, I just want, I see that you've got a little over an hour. I just wanted to let you know in 22 minutes, I'll have to log off. Is that okay? Or do you want to find someone that can stay for the full hour? No, that's okay. I'd like. I'd like only to, to take a 15 minute class. <laughs> ah, okay, good deal. That's perfect then. I see you have a lesson pulled up for your hometown. Is this what you wanted to do? No, I think you... Cambry is selecting those lessons automatically. <laughs> ah, okay. Uh, I... Do you want to do a lesson or do you just like having conversation? What would you I like? Would, uh, I'd like to, to read with you an article. Do, and, you, and do you do that? Yeah. Do you have one in mind? Yeah, An well, article? I, I've just sent you uh, the link. Uh, okay, hold on. I think there's a way okay. I can open? screen share. Uh, it's pulling up. Okay. Let's see if I know how to do this. I'm not very tech savvy. Do you know what that means? No, what does that mean? <laughs> tech savvy means not very good with technology stuff. So anytime we say savvy, this means good at. So if I say I'm not very tech savvy, it means it's difficult uh, um, for me to use technology. <laughs> Uh, I, I could change tech for another word that I'm not good at and have another meaning. For yes. Example, I'm not very, I don't know, food savvy. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, anything savvy is just like, that's that's not your area. I'm not very savvy. Ah, uh, that's good. This is the first time I, <laughs> I hear that expression. <laughs> Oh, good. I don't know technology, but I can teach you how to say I don't know technology. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'm going to try to get this screen to where we're both looking at the article here. I yeah, don't know what cool. I'm doing, so if it hangs up, just call back, okay? Okay, let's go. <laughs> okay, because I'm just playing around with this here. Let's see. Uh, uh, I don't know. I think... It would be better we could read, you know, without, uh, you know, sharing the screens, so you can hear okay. my pronunciation. Can listen to, okay. so, to me while I'm reading. Okay, that's good. And then just let me know if there are not if there are words that uh, you don't know the meaning to, and I'll type them, and then at the end we can go over them. Is that good? Okay, that's perfect. Okay. Okay, okay, I've got it pulled up, so... Okay, I'm gonna start reading it. Okay. okay. So, three-year-old reaches top of 3,000 meter mountain. A three-year-old boy is thought to be the youngest person to reach the top of the mountain Peace Bedio, I think, Bedio. The BBC reports. Axon holding i i hate pronouncing names i don't know why <laughs> it's the same in america if it's not a common name then i mean we just look at grammatics jackson holding usually ou is owl but yeah okay, so okay. i would say jackson holding perfect from the uk's lake district climbed the 3350 meter mountain with his mother jessica his father leo and his seven-year-old sister, Freya. He was carried up the mountain, which is on the border of Italy and Switzerland, on his mother's back. The BBC also says that Freya is now the youngest person to reach the mountain stop without any help. Mm. The family started to climb on July 25th, and it took them four days to go up and back down. 
Jackson's reward for completing the journey was a packet. Packet. What? Packet. Packet mm -hmm. was a packet of Haribo sweets. Really? <laughs> oh <my God>. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't the first time the family has climbed a mountain together. We've done, and they said, we've done quite a bit of stuff in the UK and Europe in previous years. Leo Howden told Southwest News Service. Jessica Howden told the Independent that they choose more difficult climbs each year. She described climbing peace. Oh my gosh, Badayo. I don't know how to pronounce that. <laughs> peace Badayo, is that right? I guess. How, this is how not how an English word. This yeah, is that's not an English word. About, yeah, that's interesting about names because, for example, when we don't know the pronunciation, I think I would pronounce it based on Portuguese, my first language. <laughs> Right. Yeah. So gourmet, like phonetically, if I were to sound it out in English, it would be Piz Bedio. What, what you said? Piz Bedio. Ah, that's cool. Well, almost okay. there. <laughs> uh, Piz Bedio as a huge achievement. Leo Howding, who is a professional climber, told the BBC that the final 1,000 meter section of Piz Bedio is one of the best climbs of its type in the world. He has been climbing since he was 10 years old and celebrated his 40th birthday while on the mountain. Pisbo Dial is a mountain in the Bregaglia range. I don't know. Bregaglia yeah, yeah, range. <laughs> It was first climbed in 1867 by W.A.B. College. College? I don't know. I would say college. Coolidge with guides Francois de Vossold and Henry de Vossold. The highest mountain in the range is Mount Disgrazia, which is 3,678 meters tall. Okay, let's talk okay. about this talks because it's so interesting. <laughs> First of all, I'd like to ask you, what do you think about a family bringing a baby It's not kind of baby to, to climb up the mountain. Oh, do you know me personally? No, this I don't is have. my <laughs> life. I travel the world with my five children, and we do everything from hitchhiking to climbing Mount. We climbed Mount Tupcal. We do all of this. So I am all for this. I think this is life. This is living. This is you get one childhood, and I like to make the most of it for them oh. so yeah i think it's yeah. awesome i love that article oh, that's what good. about you does this feel too risky for you or is this something that you agreed with i think that's the word it's too risky to me too risky <laughs> yeah. uh I'm, no I'm, 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 i think <laughs> i i would not do that especially maybe by mm -hmm. myself on my own with only you know specialized people but with a kid I would not dare to do it. <laughs> really? Yeah, no, I love this kind of thing. Uh, now, they looks like they climbed differently than we did. We climbed Mount Tupcal, which uh, we did not have to, we did not have to actually climb. It's a trail up a, up a mountain. It's, it's a big mountain. It's the second highest in Africa. Uh, but you're not having to find your climbs, your grips. Oh, Does that make sense? So yeah, for us, yeah. it wasn't as, as risky uh, as this seemed to be. But even still, uh, yeah, I like it. I'm all for I it. Like it. That's good. <laughs> I'm a little bit cautious. And I, I don't know. You know, what is the name of that sport when you jump out of a plane? What is it called, please? Skydiving. Yeah, skydiving. Have you ever done that? I haven't ever done it, but I would. Yeah, oh, I like this kind of thing. That's would cool. you? I guess not. No. No, no. I do not. No, do that. no. <laughs> yeah, I prefer things more, you know, safe. I think. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like, for uh, example, what, what, where do you get your satisfaction? Where do you get your adrenaline? Okay, I like playing 
sports, you know, for example, okay. play soccer, you know, play basketball, play volleyball. So I think those things, I, I have, I have more fun do, doing those things. <laughs> Are you in Brazil right now? Yes, I am. I live in Brazil, you, in the state of Sao Paulo. Have you ever been to the U.S.? No, I have not. I haven't yeah. been outside of Brazil. It's one of my uh, my goals. To uh, to the I, world. I don't often hear foreigners call it soccer unless they've been living in the United States. Oh, uh, yeah. But, you know, actually, when we learn English, the American English here, we learn that soccer is what we play here, and but everywhere else, for example, outside of the United States, they say football. Yeah, <laughs> everywhere says so. okay. So, it's like football. so in Brazil, but if you're not learning English in Brazil, you call it football, right? Football, exactly. Yeah. Football. Even people that speak fluent English with me, uh, they always will still call it football. So even so much that I call it that now with my children, <laughs> uh, because I've heard it that. So like, I think I talk to foreigners, foreigners probably more than I do natives now. But um, yeah, okay. There was one word. Would you pronounce this, please? Which word? Uh, I just typed it. D O N E. Done. Done. It's m done. Uh, done. Done. Is it yeah, done? you had more of it. You pronounced it the way that we're taught. That E makes the O say its name. So don't. But we don't say it like this. We break the rule and done. we say done. It's almost like D-U-N. Done. done. Have you ever done that? Have you ever done that? Done. Yeah, exactly. Um, it's like yep. done. I could close, I, I could put T-S. It would be like donut. Like donut. <laughs> yeah, done. Like done. Yeah, done. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Done. Thank you. Done. Yeah, everything else is perfect. Done. Thank you. Yes. But, but, you know, as I told you, I'd love to go to the U.S. and I feel afraid of going to another country, but I'd like to, to face that fear and accomplish it because yeah. it's a dream of mine. I can't let yeah. my fears to, you know, to get in my way. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, um, my first trip abroad, how old are you? I'm 23. 23. Okay. My first trip abroad was, I was recently divorced. And so it was very hard for me to deal with such a different lifestyle. And I was trying to find like, what makes me happy now that I'm not uh, living this family life all the time. And so my first time abroad, I, it was just a couple of years ago. I was 32, I think. And but I just put things in a backpack and it was actually one of my children's backpacks and I just backpacked to Europe. I knew nothing about what I was doing. I didn't know how to get a boarding pass. I didn't know like how things went in the airport, like where to go, what the steps are. I didn't know any languages, not even hello. I, I mean, I knew nothing. I could not even the countries I visited. I could not have identified them on a map uh, before I went there. So I knew nothing. I just thought, um, uh, there's, a phrase, <laughs> there's a phrase. There's a phrase. It says, uh, somebody says, it. I'm Googling it really quick. So I really like it. Yes, I'm afraid. I think it goes, yes, I'm afraid. But watch me leap full of fear. So, yes, I'm afraid to jump. Hold on. I'll tell you the exact one. Okay. And I've kind of used this to, uh, like, guide me, sort of. Um, mm, I see. That's awesome. You like to... If there, uh, I think there is an expression in English when you do things while you are, you know, at the moment. I think it's play by ear, I don't know. <laughs> Playing by ear means we aren't sure of, this is more of a casual word. It doesn't have to do with uh, a fear or bravery. It would be like, um, I don't know if I'll be able to come to your party because I might have family coming over. I'm going to have to play that by ear. Does that make mm -hmm. sense? So that's how we would use that. Make another sentence, please. 
Okay, so hold on, I'll type it for you. Um, I don't know if I will be able to attend your party. My parents may be coming to visit, so I will have to play it by ear. It means I will, I will have to wait moment by moment to see, play it by ear. Mm -hmm. uh, I just have to see what happens before mm -hmm. I can can know which to do. And I can't believe yeah, I can't find it, my favorite quote to share with you. So I'll yeah. have to message it to you after yeah, class but it, sometime. Yeah, but it's, it's, but that phrase is like similar to what you told me, right? For example, you didn't know how to have your ticket and how to have Yeah, your... no, no, no. Play it by ear is very casual, very like, I did not play it by ear. Uh, play it by ear is like, both situations are fine. They're comfortable. You're just not sure which one. I don't know if we'll have pizza or spaghetti tonight. Uh, I'll just have to play it by ear. It's a very casual statement. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. But so if you're, but if you're talking about doing, like walking into the unknown, we would use this phrase, walking into the unknown. Uh, this would not be playing it by ear. This is walking um, into the unknown. Uh, or we oh, can have to say, uh, going okay. into uncharted, uncharted territory, uncharted territory. Um, yeah, so in this going into uncharted territory, we also use this uh, not just in the literal way of territory as in states or whatever, but we can say this. Maybe if I'm going into a math class and I'm not very familiar with this kind of math, I could mm -hmm. say, oh, I'm heading into uncharted territory. Like, I know nothing about this. I'm going into uncharted territory. Uh, going into yeah. uncharted territory. Ah, uh, that's cool. Mm -hmm. Thank you.